Good evening, folks. Welcome to the Cleveland Photographic Society's People Competition for October the 9th, 2020. A couple of announcements for you. Uh, we have uh, some upcoming competitions. October the 16th will be our B competition. The deadline for that has already passed. On November the 6th, we will have a black and white in pictorial competition. The deadline to enter will be October the 28th. And also on November the 20th, we will have a creative in pictorial competition with a deadline to enter of November 11th. Upcoming field trips. On October the 17th, we will uh, be visiting the Ashtabula Covered Bridges. Uh, information will be posted on the website shortly. Basically what we're gonna do is provide you with an itinerary and uh, some suggested routes. Uh, you'll be able to follow that along on your own, so there uh, will not actually be a specific uh, gathering point or, uh, uh, or leadership on the trip, but we will provide you with full information on each of the bridges, and you can take the trip at your leisure at any time, not even necessarily on October the 17th. Uh, details will be posted on the calendar very soon. On October the 25th, we will have a field trip to the Cuyahoga Valley for Fall Colors. Again, all information will be posted on the calendar. Uh, another announcement, if you ordered a CPS mask, they have all been mailed out. If you have not received one, please let us know. But uh, you should have already received your mask. Hopefully you, uh, you're enjoying it and uh, spreading the word about uh, the Cleveland Photographic Society. Uh, wherever you go. Uh, if you did not receive one, please send us an email at info at clevelandphoto.org. Uh, a reminder that our classes have started. Uh, all, of, uh, all three of our classes are well underway at this point. Uh, Wednesday evenings, we're hosting our Fundamentals of Good Photography class. On Saturdays, our Photoshop editing class is taking place. In fact, our last session will be this coming Saturday. On Monday evenings, uh, the Lightroom Classic course is going on. Information about the winter session classes, which at this point will be held virtually, uh, will be posted up on the website soon. Remember that uh, CPS classes make wonderful uh, holiday gifts. So keep that in mind if you will, and please share the word with your friends. You can watch this in all Friday evening meetings at uh, your convenience on the CPS YouTube channel. Uh, you can visit the link on the CPS website homepage uh, in order to connect, or you can visit YouTube and simply search for Cleave Photographic, all one word. We suggest that you subscribe to our channel and choose to be uh, notif uh, notified whenever a new visit uh, video is posted so that you don't miss out. Uh, all videos begin at 7.30 on Friday evenings, but all recordings are available anytime thereafter, so you can watch them at your convenience. So this is our second People in Pictorial competition for the 2020-2021 year. Tonight we have a total of 83 images, 44 in People, and 39 in Pictorial. Here are our judges for the evening. Our first judge is Bruce Bishop. He's been a photojournalist for more than 30 years. He does general assignment news photography, but is best known for his breaking news coverage. He also runs a wedding photography business. Photography is my profession, but I'm fortunate it is also my hobby, Bishop says. He enjoys storm chasing and the involved photography all across Ohio and ranging as far as Oklahoma. He's made presentations at CPS and judged in the past. I can't say enough how impressed I am with the quality of work this group does, he added. Rick Garrity is our second judge. He's been a published professional photographer for more than 35 years. He's based in New York City, in the New York City, New Jersey metro area, and specializes in people, product, location assignments, and documenting everyday life in the U.S. and Canada. His images of people include Paul Newman, Sylvester Stallone, Kevin Smith, Oliver Stone, and many others. He does commercial work, which includes images for BMW, Sony, Panasonic, Samsung, and IBM. He's the owner of Garrity Photographic Inc., a member of NPPA, and a Panasonic Lumix Global Ambassador. I'm going to turn things over for just a moment to our own Mike Kopkis, who will explain our third judge. 
Our third judge tonight is going to be Bill Keaton. Now, Bill is filling in for one of the judges who did not get back to us in time. And um, I want to assure you that Bill did not see the images beforehand. Uh, he doesn't know when he uh, judged these images. He had no idea who the images were from. He did have a couple of submissions in here, and when he came to his own submissions, he uh, recused himself, did not score them. And uh, for his score, we will uh, use uh, the average of the other two judges so that, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to be as fair as possible with this. So uh, thank you to Bill for filling in. So let me read uh, some of Bill's bio. Bill has been involved with photography for almost 50 years, and he began, start, uh, began as a high school yearbook photographer. Uh, he's uh, a past studio owner, studio owner and graduate of The Ohio State University in 78 with a degree in journalism. He spent several years in the newspaper business, both writing and taking photos. He switched careers in the mid-80s, working more than 25 years as an air traffic controller. He retired in 2011 and joined the Cleveland Photographic Society not long after. He has spent the past few years as chairman of the CPS Competition Committee, and his photo interests are many, ranging from macro to nature to people. So again, thank you, Bill, for filling in. Very good. Thanks, Mike. Um, just to clarify for you, whenever we have a situation where we have to average two judges' scores, uh, our policy is if uh, the, um, the average would result in, a, in a, a half of a point. For the first image judged, the uh, image is rounded up. For the second image uh, judged, um, it's rounded down. And then we follow that policy throughout the remainder as necessary. Um, our judges' uh, comments this evening will be read by, uh, Bruce's comments will be read by Eric Wethington, uh, Rick's comments will be read by Mike Kopkis, and Bill Keaton's comments will be read by Bill Keaton, as mentioned. All right, just to remind, refresh you of our judging criteria, each judge scores an image on a scale of five to nine. The final score for each image is the total of all three judges' scores, a perfect score would be a score of 27, nine, a score of nine from each of the three judges. Uh, these are relatively rare, but we do have them from time to time, so we'll look and see if we have any this evening. Images are judged on three criteria, impact, composition, and technique, up to three points for each of those criteria. So with that, let's get started. For our people competition, we will be uh, having judges comment on all of the uh, images that were entered. In the pictorial category, uh, judges will only comment on the images previously selected by the individual photographers for comment. So our, our people images, this is our first. Bruce says, it's nice to see a photo of the Amish being more than just Amish. I love pictures that have multiple elements, and this one has Amish and humor. The image is by Ronald Wilson. It's entitled Amish Children. Score is 20 points. Rick says, the expressions are intense and have me wanting to be there and hear their strategy. Nice rule of thirds composition. The image is by Susan Mahorchik. It's entitled Bandit. 21 points. This is a nice father-son uh, type shot. And the use of on-camera flash as evidenced by the highlights in the eyes was done fairly well. It's balanced. It's done nice. But if you're going to do this kind of shot, you know, wait and don't let a person walk through your background like that. The photographer is Fran Marino. The image is entitled Best Buddies, 18 points. Bruce says, I like this photo so much more because of the framing. I do think her face could have used a little bit more light. It would have made it a little, uh, even nicer. The image is by Kathy Yamari. It's entitled Bird Cage, 22 points.
Rick says, lighting and composition are well done. I wish there was something else in the shot that the boy was looking at to give it more interest. The photographer is Susan Mahorchik. The in, uh, image is entitled, Boy at the Beach, 21 points. I like the colors in this and the lighting on the face is handled very well. But the photographer crops slightly into the hair and the elbow on the right, and that is jarring and comes across as an accident because it's such a slight crop. If the photographer shot it this way, it would be more effective to have just cropped it as a rather tight headshot. The photographer is Eric Wethington. The image is entitled Duotone Peyton. 23 points, honorable mention. Bruce says, this is one of those pictures that's just cool because, it, I'm, it, because it's not from here. The photographer did a nice job of bringing back the details in the shadow. I'll be honest, this photo made me think for a minute uh, because I felt conflicted about the shadow. I think perhaps a little too much detail was recovered and took away from a little of the mystery from the unusual person. The image is by Richard Ader. It's entitled Egyptian Merchant. 24 points, third place. Rick says, lighting could have been more dramatic and the background is too stark. The model and the concept are great. I think a darker background would make her pop. The photographer is Tammy Yankovic. It's entitled Fairy Tale Princess. 22 points. This is a fun shot that captured a nice family moment. The little girl clinging to what I assume is her mother's leg adds to the story. But I think you might have improved on the decisive moment in the image had you let the water roll in closer to the young boy. I also suggest try shooting this from a little bit lower angle. The image is by Nancy Kakelik. It's entitled Family on the Beach. 21 points. Bruce says, this is a simple picture executed perfectly. Great exposure, great processing, great face on the subject, and detail in the clothing is great. Take a look at his hands, the way he is holding the instrument. It's just very well done, just a very well done image. The photographer is Dave Siborik. It's entitled Fife and 25 points, second place. Rick says, nice exposure on the subject. I would, not, I would have not cropped so close to the feet. Depth of field is very well done. I think I would have toned down the reflection above the doorknob. It's a bit distracting. The photographer is Michael Halper. It's entitled Gateway, 18 points. This captures a fun, joyous moment. For me, it works better as a documentary photograph, and I say this because it tells a story at the sacrifice a little bit of composition, which sometimes happens in documentary photography. As a people foe, it still tells a story, but then composition becomes a little bit more important. The flow of this photo is to the right, and there needs to be more there so my eye can continue rather than the jarring edge. The image is by Marge Brady. It's entitled Gay Pride Ride. 24 points, third place. Nice lighting, nice detail. Um, I wish there was some way to know what was happening in the picture. That's not a knock on the photographer. Sometimes there just isn't a way to tie it all together into one photo. The picture is done well enough that it left me curious. I'd say it's a win for the shooter. 
The photographer is Richard Ader. It's entitled Girl at a Window. 25 points, second place. Rick says, everyone loves ice cream. This photo really shows his admiration for this cone before he devours it. Facial expression is priceless, and the exposure is spot on. Next time, try some different composition techniques just for fun. The photographer is Gary Marich. It's entitled, Grandpa's Soft Serve. 21 points. I like the low angle and the use of black and white. The shadows are blocked up just a little bit, but there's good lighting on the face. Since the photographer took the time to get down low to shoot this, move a little bit to the right and exclude the white doorway on the right and don't crop off the front of the foot. I also question where you, whether you needed to include the white ceiling. Photographer is Michael Halper. It's entitled Headroom. 21 points. Bruce says, I'm not sure how I feel about this. I do like the effort at spotlighting the faces, but the lighting seems to be a little scattered. The bright area on the back of the subject at the far left, the shading on the one in the center has a dark splotch on the side like there was maybe a little too much to burn put into that area. Generally though, I do appreciate the effort taken and the effects used on the picture do work to create the look the photographer was going for. It all worked very nicely on the model at the far right. The photographer is Serena Cernick. It's entitled Hocus Pocus, 21 points. Rick says, this image is soft and has a very shallow depth of field. When using a wide aperture, watch the focus on the eyes. Love the expression and the background. The image is by Michael Lonsdale. It's entitled Joie de Vivre. 18 points. The photographer captured a great expression and got, and got down low to shoot up at this young subject. Those were all pluses. Nice lighting, and the eyes are sharp. I might consider cropping off the bottom a bit to eliminate the pink arch on the shirt. That is distracting. The photographer is Mike Kopkis. It's entitled Keeley 2. 24 points, third place. Bruce says, man, I was hoping I'd get, would get, wouldn't get to comment on this one. I believe I know what I gave this high score, but I wasn't sure about the techniques used. Uh, it brings into question when something goes from being a picture into digital painting. This image definitely goes into the digital painting category. Having led with that, I love this picture. And if that were my child, I would treasure it and keep it as a piece of art. I think the technique used was done with great care and was masterfully created. I do think there is enough of the original picture of the child to know that the feel created by the child isn't painted in. That joy is captured. Congratulations on a wonderful image no matter what category it's in. The photographer is Jackie Sieski. It's entitled Little Boy's Fairy Tale Playtime. 25 points, second place. Okay, Rick says, the defocus background is well done. However, the image looks over-sharpened. The lighting is very nice, and the subject really pops. The photographer is Rick Carell. It's entitled Luke One. 23 points, honorable mention. There's nice lighting on the face and a nice tilt of the head in this image. The out-of-focus reds are muted enough not to be distracting, but I just think there is too much of that. I would suggest cropping some off the top and, and bottom, and perhaps a little from the right. 
This is a nice image I feel careful cropping would make a lot better. The photographer is Kathy Amari. It's entitled Marissa. 23 points, honorable mention. Bruce says, generally I love this picture until you get to the ankles. From there down, the blown out highlights and the effort to recover them were likely a frustration for the photographer. Sometimes the situation just can't be worked around. If we had a crew and lots of light modifiers and hours to spend, we could make it perfect. Unfortunately, that's not realistic for most of us. The highlights are an issue because I'm asked to look at this with a critical eye. I really like everything about the other 90% of this picture. The photographer is Jackie Sieski. It's entitled On Point. 23 points, honorable mention. Rick says, first, you need to crop out the people on the left since they are very distracting. The exposure and color are good. The photo does show that this is a very popular photo spot. I think I would have come in closer and concentrated on just a few people to make it less busy. The image is by Dennis Wirt. It's entitled Patience, 20 points. This is a fun capture in difficult light, which a photographer handled fairly well. Nice that you kept the eyes over the glasses. Uh, that's a big plus. The upper right being so bright is distracting. Try toning that down just a bit. The photographer is Kim Wasileski. It's entitled Piano Man, 22 points. Bruce says, nicely done black and white. This is as simple as simple gets. The picture is sharp, the subject is clearly connected with the photographer, and that along with the motion of the hair makes us something nice. The image is by Bill Keaton. It's entitled Running Free. 23 points, honorable mention. Rick says, beautiful subject, but the image is soft. The shallow depth of field is very nice, but I'm not sure uh, where you locked focus. Be careful with fast lenses. The photographer is Marge Brady. It's entitled, Smudgy Face. 22 points. I really like the background in this, and the model's face is expressive, and I like the intensity of the eyes. If this were just the upper torso and arms, it would be a great shot. The inclusion of the legs and their angles, though, makes it feel a little awkward. The photographer is Susan Bestel. It's entitled Sophia, 22 points. Bruce says, so the darkening of the photo, or the darkening of the picture is a technique to make the background less distracting. When you're evaluating a picture that makes you really, a, when you're evaluating a picture that makes you really aware of the people and things behind the subject. I'm sure the photographer would have much preferred a cleaner background. That would have been, that would have made this much stronger. And an interesting, it's an interesting subject and I did zoom in and take a good look at the picture because it made me want to figure out where he was, what was happening behind him, etc. This is similar to another photo in the contest where the subject matter leaves you wanting more information, and that's a good thing. The photographer is Mike Kopkis. It's entitled Standing Guard. 23 points, honorable mention. Okay, Rick says, nice action photo, good use of a high shutter speed. I would have changed the composition a bit so the edge of the sidewalk doesn't line up with the top of the subject's head. The photographer is Gary Marich. It's entitled Summer Fun, 21 points. This shot has a lot of initial impact. 
I like the moodiness of the dark background, though I think the contrast is just a little too high. The white eyes draw you in, but since they're almost blank, they leave you wanting something more. Tone down the whites in the fur and neck just a little so they don't compete with the face. The image is by Darla Zajac. It's entitled The Barbarian with White Contact Lenses. 24 points, third place. Bruce says, a cool looking guy and a great personality portrait. The unfortunate thing is something the photographer has likely already identified. There looks like to be motion blur and that hurts the look. I really like the picture and we can all relate to having a cool picture that was one shutter speed away from being even better. The photographer is Dave Saboric. It's entitled The Cobbler. 24 points, third place. Rick says, composition is spot on. The shot makes me want to hear the story. Well done, great location and concept. The image is by Dennis Wirt. It's entitled, Tired and Retired. 25 points, second place. An interesting face and I can see why the photographer was drawn to the subject. I think it's a little too red, and pay attention to your shallow depth of field. The focus appears to be on the mustache, and the eyes are a little soft. The photographer is Mike Lonsdale. It's entitled Wilderness Man. 23 points, honorable mention. Bruce says, I'm a news photographer who concentrated on breaking news, so this is right up my alley. Nice exposure on the fire, and there is plenty of it. I do think the shadows are a little blocky on the firefighters, and wish there were a bit more engagement from the firefighter on the left. I also like the smoke billowing in the background. Overall, it's a cool picture, and I wouldn't have a problem putting it on the front page. The image is by Serena Cernick. It's entitled, Among the Flames. 22 points. Rick says, very nice setup. The lighting is nice and the exposure is right on. The subject really stands out. Less is more. The photographer is Fran Marino. It's entitled Beautiful Bell. 23 points, honorable mention. Great flowing lines and a nice job of maintaining details in the man's face. The highlights may be a little hot and I might crop just a bit from the top and bottom, but that is nitpicky. This is a nice photo. The photographer is Susan Bestel. It's entitled Bolero. 24 points, third place. Bruce says, I hate to repeat comments, but here it is. A great picture, a super simple in execution and subject, and it all just works together perfectly for a very nice image. The photographer is Bill Keaton. The image is entitled Contemplation. 27 points, perfect score, first place. All right, Rick says, uh, the lighting is very nice and the subject really stands out. The shallow depth of field is also well done. I'm happy you didn't have your subject smile because this is very natural. The image is by Rick Carell. It's entitled Destiny 2, 22 points. This is a great close-up with an in-your-face feel about it. The photographer did a good job handling the light, especially since the subject is wearing a hat with a bill. You are right on the edge with the depth of field though, so be careful with that. Nice image. The photographer is Rick Mills. It's entitled Harvey Mentee. 24 points, third place.
Bruce says, cute kid, good exposure. I love the eyes scrunched a bit. Not much to add critique wise. It's just a great little moment in a kid's life and pictures like this get more valuable, more valuable to a family with every year that passes. The image is by Nancy Kakelik. It's entitled Sharpshooter. 23 points, honorable mention. Rick says, interesting look. I'd like to hear the relationship between you and your subject. The lighting is cool for the background. It really fits. I think the rule of thirds could have had a field day with this background. The photographer is Tammy Yankovic. It's entitled Strike a Pose. 23 points, honorable mention. An amusing shot, and I'm sure all of us as photographers have had that feeling look at one time. When you set something like this up, pay attention to the details. Though she's holding a book, she doesn't appear to be looking in that direction. She appears to be looking over the book. The image is by Kim Wasileski. It's entitled, The Light Bulb Moment. 22 points. Bruce says, I like this picture a lot. It has two negatives on it, though. Unfortunately, that fan on the left side is a mood killer. The other thing has to do with what looks like a bit of soft focus on the front female and a depth of field blur on the other one. Sometimes you just have to sacrifice and go with the higher ISO. Unfortunately, this kind of thing gets me when I do personal work. I always want the ISO lower than it probably should be. Ironically, at work, I'll run that up to 60, ISO 6400 in a heartbeat because new pr newsprint just doesn't care, LOL. It's really two simple fixes, and, and, and this picture would have been super cool. The photographer did just a great job picking interesting subjects, and there's some action in the photo. Critique aside, it's a cool, fun image. The image is by Darla Zajac. It's entitled, The Young Lady and the Dressmaker, The Fitting. 24 points, third place. Rick says, nice dramatic lighting. Black and white is one of my favorite styles. The emotions on both faces are priceless. Well done. If anything, I think I would have not cropped so tight. I'm very guilty of cropping tight also. The photographer is Dan Lester. It's entitled Uncle and Niece. 23 points, honorable mention. That concludes our people uh, images for the evening. We'll now move on to pictorial. Uh, we'll begin with the no comment images and then move on to uh, uh, our judges' comments. The first image is by Bob Kovaleski. It's entitled Smoke from the Demo uh, Devastating California Fires. 23 points, third place. Rob, we're commenting on all, all the images. I did not know that. <laughs> My, uh, okay. This image, as Rob said, uh, it's a nice shot of the Milky Way, though I think you included a little too much of the sky. I'd also like to see a little bit more detail on the land features. Not too much, but a little more. Again, Bob Kovaleski, smoke from the devastating California fires. 23 points, third place. Bruce says, if I did anything to this, it would be, to, would be a gentle crop on the right side. Other than that, it's a really interesting and, and post-production looks like it was probably made easier by a good image to start with. The photographer is Darla Zajac. It's entitled, An Arachnid's Universe. 22 points. Okay, Rick says, I like the composition and shallow depth of field. The colors are spot on and very natural. I would have tried a horizontal just for fun, and you may have. Very nice image. The photographer is Rick Mills. 
It's entitled Beaver Marsh Kingfisher. 23 points, third place. The focus is nice and sharp in the center of this, moderately soft on the left and very out of focus on the right. The yellow, being the brightest and being out of focus, just dominates this too much. I think this would be improved if you cropped a little off the top and about a third off the right. That would leave sharper focus and more colors, and the colors more soft and appealing. The photographer is Joseph Miko. It's entitled Bicolor Dahlia. 23 points, third place. Bruce says, I think these flowers and the composition and post work is great. Had the photographer done an image stack, this would have been made even stronger. In any case, it's still very pretty. The image is by Nancy Kakelik. It's entitled Bright Clematis. 21 points. Rick says, beautiful image. It's a very painterly effect, looking like a canvas painting and not a photograph. I'm interested in the process used to make this image. It's somewhat captivating. The photographer is Vicki Wirt. It's entitled Butterfly Weed Seed. 25 points. First place. I think this has the potential to be an interesting abstract. It is a nice study of water and motion. I would crop in from the left to eliminate the foreground boulder and about the same on the right to give it some symmetry. That would remove the static elements and let the viewer better contemplate the movement. The image is by Ron Werman. It's entitled Doan Brook Cascade. 23 points, third place. Bruce says, I love this. Since I have to point out something, I'll go with the black at the bottom of the picture. It doesn't look natural, so maybe it's a light modifier. Other than that, this is great, and anybody would be proud of that shot. The photographer is Kathleen Amari. It's entitled Dragonfly Days. 23 points, third place. Rick says, very nice environmental portrait. Can this young woman actually bend that way or is it Photoshop? Either way, it's a cool shot. Composition is very good and the low angle gives it an interesting point of view. The image is by Susan Bestel. It's entitled Emerald. 22 points. I really like the straight on view and the sharpness in the face of this. I'm not sure what was done in post processing, but the head just seems so much brighter than everything else, and that gives it a little bit of an unnatural feel. The image is by Rick Carell. It's entitled Face to Face with a Dragon. 23 points, third place. Bruce says, I hoped I'd get this one. I love this. This club excelled at pictorial and things like this are what I expect to see. A really neat photograph. The photographer is Vicki Wirt. It's entitled Filigree Leaf. 24 points, second place. Rick says, very futuristic. It looks like most of this image has been done in post-production, so it doesn't look like a photograph. The photographer is Ronald Wilson. It's entitled Girl in Hoops 5. 25 points, first place. This is a nice capture of a youngster indulging in a chocolate donut, but there's an awful lot going on in the background. If this is a grab shot, okay, you go with what is presented, but if you're able, 
turn the shoulders so he's not square to the camera and crop out the distracting white flowers. The photographer is Fran Marino. It's entitled, Glad That Wedding Is Over Because It's Donut Time. 19 points. Bruce says, the classic scenic. I hate to not leave helpful comments, but I feel like there isn't much to say. Maybe a juggling bear walking through the frame. Well done, classic scene perfectly executed. The photographer is Bob Kovaleski. It's entitled, Good Morning Bryce. 23 points, third place. Rick says, very moody shot. A beautiful sky and the crop is spot on. The exposure is just the right balance of light in the foreground versus the background. Well done. The image is by Serena Cernick. It's entitled, Help Guide Me to a Safe Harbor. 24 points, second place. Okay. I have to preface this with saying that because of the circumstances, I was thrown into the position of critiquing my own photograph. So I think this is a respectably sharp image of a butterfly captured against fairly complementary background colors. And to be honest, it was the background colors that caught my eye. The back wing being out of focus blends well into the background, the back antenna being the only part noticeably out of focus is a bit distracting. But that is the nature of doing macro in the field. The butterfly could use a little bit more room, and I might add, since I'm the photographer, that wasn't available without screwing up the background. <laughs> the photographer is Bill Keaton. It's entitled High Key Monarch. 24 points, second place. Bruce says, this is an interesting picture. I think there is a little bit of interaction missing, either between the two subjects or between the child and the photographer. It's an interesting situation for sure. The photographer is Kim Wasileski. It's entitled, Me and Mr. Bronze. 21 points. All right, Rick says, nice light. The composition is nice, having some interest in the foreground. Pay attention to the time of day and how the light hits, or paying attention to the time of day and how the light hits your subject is key. Nice work. The image is by Donna Schneider. It's entitled Mount Hood from Lost Lake. 23 points, third place. This is a nice location and one of those times when the harsh light is not really a distraction. This has nice symmetry. I think it might be better shot from a very low angle to give more of a feeling of the trees towering over the photographer. As it is, there's just a little too much foreground. The photographer is Rick Mills. It's entitled Oak Hill, 22 points. Bruce says, very nice detail and color. I don't believe this is an image stack. If, if you can't stack them, shoot them flat just like this and it works great. It's very rich looking. Good job on the shot and the post. The photographer is Joseph Miko. It's entitled Painted Nettle. 23 points, third place. Rick says, this shot has some grit to it. I like the industrial background. Your subject has the look of a fighter. I would, have had, I would have had him take off his watch. It doesn't fit the vibe in this shot. The photographer is Tammy Yankovic. It's entitled, Strike a Pose Number Two. 21 points. Beautiful pastel colors and a nice job capturing the textures in the flower. But the bulb or unopened flower on the left extending into the top of the frame is pretty distracting. 
The photographer is Kathleen Amari. It's entitled Tulip Tears, 21 points. Bruce says, nice cold moment as the train zips past in a blur. Something as simple as those co coveralls make such a difference in a picture. The photographer is Mike Lonsale. It's entitled A Shared Moment. 24 points, second place. Rick says, great detail and color. I think I would have used the rule of thirds and moved it off center more. The background has the look of a painting. The image is by Kathy Amari. It's entitled Black Eyed Susan. 22 points. Nice choice of aperture and shutter speed on this to maintain sharpness throughout and yet to give a feel of motion to the water. All the orange on the lower left is a little bit of a distraction. I would tone that down. And the overall contrast of the entire scene feels just a little too high. The photographer is Joseph Miko. It's entitled Brandywine Falls, 21 points. Bruce says, I like this. It's stark. I wonder if this is how the photographer normally shoots or if this is one of one time thing. I respect people who always see things around them and make the images of things people don't normally even notice. The photographer is Michael Halper. It's entitled Breaker. 22 points. Rick says, time and place. Great use of shutter speed. The composition is well done, not easy when shooting a rodeo. Hopefully that bull rider got to see this photo. The photographer is Ronald Wilson. It's entitled Bull Rider 12. 23 points, third place. I really like the repeating patterns and reflections. This photo has textures and it has shapes but I think the photographer is including a little bit too much. I would crop off the left to eliminate the blue of the sky as that's not needed and it's the brightest color in the photograph so it draws my eyes to the edge. I would also crop in from the right to eliminate that seam in the concrete. Those massive blocks of white are just a little too heavy on that side. The photographer is Ron Worman. It's entitled Curved Reflection, 23 points, third place. Bruce says, I love the rolling fields and a great dog. I did feel like maybe this picture was missing something. It's pretty clearly a hunting picture. I think a hunter somewhere in the frame would have moved this picture to an entirely different level. The image is by Gary Marich. It's entitled Dottie Hunting, 23 points, third place. Rick says, interesting point of view. It looks like it could be a vertical crop as well. I think I would have given more room around the subject to show more of the post it's perched on. The photographer is Mike Kopkus. It's entitled Finch at the Feeder. 21 points. This has textures, lines, forms, complementary colors. There is an elegant simplicity to this, and I wouldn't change a thing. This is a great shot. The image is by Vicki Wirt. It's entitled Ice Dancing. 24 points, second place. Bruce says, I love this. Great job on the Milky Way, but even more critical, great job on a good foreground, properly lit. This is the key to a great sky shot. The image is by Donna Schneider. It's entitled Oscar Blevins Farm, Big South Fork Recreation Area. 
25 points, first place. Rick says, the exposure is spot on and the composition is well done. A nice balance of light. I would like to see a horizontal version as well. The photographer is Marge Brady. It's entitled Peaceful Harbor. 23 points, third place. Until one has tried to shoot still lights, it is hard to comprehend just how difficult they are. In still lights, the photographer is in control of everything so there is little room for error. There's nice control of the lighting on this. I think the greenery extends a bit too much and therefore seems a touch unnatural. Great choice of subject colors except for the towel. The orange is a little too bright. Some minor issues, but still a good job. The photographer is Jackie Sieski. It's entitled Pomegranates. 25 points, first place. Bruce says, one of this pictures that we all love to shoot, and when you post it on social media, someone invariably yells at you for being on the tracks. The photographer is Bob Kovaleski. It's entitled, Railroaded Sunrise. 22 points. Rick says, everyone loves a selfie. These two women look like they're having a great day and you captured that special moment. Every picture has a story. What's the story with that hat she's holding in her hand? The image is by Richard Ader. It's entitled, Selfie at the Pyramids. 23 points, third place. Very nice lighting on this still life though I don't think it's quite as successful as the previous one I talked about. First, the table runs slightly uphill from left to right. The photographer needs to tone down the brightness of the crackers as they are by far the brightest objects in the photo. The bottle and the plate are tied together because of the liquid in the glass, but the candle feels like an afterthought. The photographer is Dennis Wirt. It's entitled Snack Time, 23 points, third place. Bruce says, again, another example of what this club does so well. A photographer can have all the gear in the world and read everything there is to read, and it all means nothing if a shooter can't see the pictures that are right there in front of them. I don't want to fake a comment about something I do differently on a picture like this. The furthest I'll go is to say, I wonder how it would look in black and white. That's it. I hope other people see these comments because this is such a great lesson for all of us. See the little things that are right there in front of us. Open your eyes, soak in the world around you. There are a million of these pictures in every square mile on this planet. It just takes patience and focus. The photographer is Dave Savoric. It's entitled Tuscarawas River, 24 points, Second place. Rick says, nice point of focus. You captured that wild looking eye and the mud on the beak perfectly. A little more negative space on the end of the beak just to show a little more of what your subject was looking at. The photographer is Kathleen Amari. It's entitled Up Close and Personal, 23 points, third place. And that concludes this evening's uh, competition. For more information about competing or to join the Cleveland Photographic Society, we encourage you to visit our website, www.clevelandphoto.org. Want to say thanks to all of our judges and to our three readers for the evening. And also thanks to all who entered and congratulations to all of our winners. As always, we encourage your feedback. Please let us know what you think of our broadcast. You, you can send us an email at info at clevelandphoto.org. Hope to see you again next week. 
and have a great week until then. Thank you.